Welcome everyone to the Puck Drops here. This is Peter Fyfit, of course. Welcome for some more hockey. We'll have some hockey, I think, later tonight and then the other few days as we go along. But we've got a different video today. We've got a video all on the Seattle Kraken, the new hockey team coming in Seattle right after the playoffs. They're going to have their expansion draft, which is what this video will be all about. Before you do that, again, I want to let you know with my channel and everything, please like, subscribe, share this video, comment. It all helps the YouTube algorithm. It all helps me so we can continue on our road to 1K, 1K subscribers, which means I can stream on my phone, as I've said before, and I can do a lot of different things to keep this channel growing and moving throughout, which is really helpful. So again, as a YouTuber, I'm supposed to have that public service announcement. I really don't care for it, but... Again, like, subscribe, share, and comment. All helps the algorithm. All helps me. Now, for this video, we will be talking about, I will be talking about the Seattle Kraken, the expansion team a few years after the Vegas Golden Knights, the new expansion team in the National Hockey League. Vegas, of course, went to the conference final, went to the cup final in their first year. And this had a great year where they have won the division two out of their four years, their first year and their third year, gone to the conference final twice in their three years, and have never missed the playoffs. So Seattle, that management group with Ron Francis, they want to reciprocate that and continue the success that Vegas had into Seattle's new expansion team. Now, what Vegas did so well was they made picks that were savvy, uh, for their franchise, they were fast players, physical players, could help like a band of misfits, this team. They could just shuffle in players in and out while they had great goaltending. And also, maybe they didn't like players on any of the teams that were available because uh, you can protect one goaltender, three defensemen, I believe, and seven forwards, any type of forward, center or winger, so that is something that teams would look at and Vegas would go, I don't like any of these players, but I like a player that I know that I can trade for. I'll take this player, like Mark Bethot from Ottawa, and I know that so-and-so will give me some picks or give me some players for that player that I uh, would want. They say we were able to get Riley Smith and Marcia, so Riley Smith from a trade, Marcia from the expansion draft, two former Florida Panthers who were blossoming into stars in Vegas. No, they didn't score goals in game one against the Minnesota Wild, but, incredible game that one was, but they have helped their hockey clubs do well on other times in the playoffs before and in the regular season. Great players they are. But on to Seattle. On to Seattle. Here we go. So what I did here was I predicted who Seattle would would take. They have to take uh, at least 14 forwards and also three goaltenders and six defensemen. They can take other players as well past that, but they have to hit that limit at least. Then I also put in the lineups, the first to fourth line. Uh, some of the players that were picked aren't in that lineup, but that just means, you know, the shuffle in the AHL, they get put in through injuries and all that. The uh, D1 pairings, the starting two goaltenders, the three goaltenders taken, but I put in a, a, just the first two. The other could play in the AHL with the Henderson Silver Knights, their minor league team, as well as the first and second power play unit and the first penalty kill unit. So, let's go. From Anaheim, Seattle takes... Johan Larson. Johan Larson, a uh, young defenseman, skilled. I think Raquel gets protected. So Johan Larson gets taken by the Seattle Kraken. So Seattle takes the young puck savvy defenseman, Johan Larson. From Arizona, the Arizona Coyotes. Seattle takes Tyler Pitlick, former Philadelphia Flyer and Arizona Coyote. Uh, Smart guy that'll be in and out of the lineup. He's fast, he's small, but he's a skilled player. So Tyler Pitlick goes to the Kraken. From the Boston Bruins, a team that already has to deal with Tuka Rask potentially going to free agency, and they've got the youngster Swayman, 
I say, since they can only protect uh, one goaltender or two goaltenders, I, I forget if it's one or two, not maybe one, I think Vladar, the other young goaltender, gets taken, Daniel Vladar, by the Seattle Kraken. So they get some youth. I don't think he'll be the starter, but they get some youth behind goaltending, which is what they're going to need. Also, I said the Henderson Silver Knights, he could be put in a young goaltender, and that's, I meant uh, Daniel Vladar, but I forgot that I'm not talking about Vegas. I'm talking about Seattle. I don't know who their expansion team is. If the Seattle Thunderbirds in WHL goes to Seattle, but I was caught up on it. it wouldn't be Henderson Silver Knights. That's Vegas' expansion. It would be whoever Seattle decides to be their expansion team. From Calgary, they take another former Bruin, Joaquin Nordstrom, guy who played in the Stanley Cup final with Boston, is a third line forward, can play center uh, if they need him to be, and that's more depth. So Seattle takes Nordstrom from Calgary. From Carolina, Cedric Paquette, uh, Stanley Cup champion from Tampa Bay, but he is in Carolina now. Forward depth, he can play center. I think he's going to play a really big role on Seattle, and so Paquette goes to the Seattle Kraken. From Colorado, they take young defenseman Devon Taves, former Islander, former Av, goes to Seattle to help them on their process, and he'll be, he's a really smart defenseman that can play even more minutes. He played a large amount in New York. He hasn't played much in Colorado. He should play more in Seattle, depending on what their team looks like. In Columbus, they take the latter player that was not really mentioned much or looked at much in the Patrick Line deal, Jack Roslovic. So Roslovic goes, he's a physical forward, he actually started up and got better and more immediate results in Columbus before Patrick Laine did. And Roslovic, he's able to pass. He's got a great snipe shot. And really, because he left Winnipeg, he didn't like it in Winnipeg. And in Columbus, never able to really put up an impact after that first two, those first two weeks. He could have a new setting here and bring out some good offense to help the team in Seattle. From Dallas, they take the big, lumbering, but offensive skilled defenseman, Jamie Alexiak. He's a league veteran. He knows what it is to win in the playoffs. He was on the cup final team last year with the Dallas Stars. He brings size and also can head a power play if they need him to and is great on the penalty kill. We'll talk more about that later. But I see from the stars, they take Alexiak from Detroit. The other latter aforementioned player from a big deal, from the Anthony Mantha deal, comes Richard Panic. Panic, a journeyman, played in Arizona, played in Tampa Bay, in Chicago. He goes to, and now in Detroit, he goes to Seattle. Richard Panic can offer some more depth and also a good penalty killer if they need him to be. The guy that is always in trade rumors, except for the past year where he has not been talked about much and not played much, gets picked from the Edmonton Oilers, the real deal, James Neal, former Penguin, former star, former Nashville Predator, Vegas Golden Knight. Uh, for the second time he gets picked in the expansion draft, I say, going from the Edmonton Oilers to the Seattle Kraken to offer experience and depth, although just like in Edmonton, I don't think he'll play a lot. From Florida, I say Nikita Gusev goes to his third team, technically fourth team. He was drafted by the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, never played there, though. Went in a trade with the New Jersey Devils. Had a great rookie year, and then this year, he did not play much and play well in New Jersey. He was really having an issue. The Management didn't really like how he played, so he got dealt to the Florida Panthers. Uh, I don't think he played last night in Game 1, but maybe he'll play some more in the series. Could help them get a jolt of offense, because against Andre Vasilevsky, I, I know they scored four goals, but you're going to want offense continued. But if Gusev does go expansion draft, I could see you, know, you want a little lightning bolt of offense. He can give you that. 
He's skilled. He's getting better defensively. There's a guy that can help. So Gusev goes to Seattle. From L.A., they take a small, puck-minded offensive defenseman in Matt Waugh. Matt Waugh from the L.A. Kings. He's got a good shot, good point shot, but he's not overall a guy that's going to lumber around and just like hammer pucks in. Like he's, he, he can roll through, set up players. He be a good setup guy as a defenseman for Seattle. I don't think he's ready yet to be the quarterback on the power play. I don't think he has enough experience, but he's getting there. Uh, L.A. would like to keep him, but I don't think they'll protect him. So there's a guy that I think will go to Seattle. From Minnesota, another guy that had a bad year last year but has had a phenomenal year this year, and I don't think the Wild want him leaving, but that's Victor Rask. And it's interesting because Carolina, who had won that trade last year or two years, whatever the deal was, with Nino Niederreiter, where he was phenomenal in Carolina, Carolina has, for all intents and purposes, as good as Minnesota's been, Carolina's had a better year. Not that Minnesota's had a bad year, but Carolina has just had an unbelievable year. Statistically, if you look at it, if it was an 82-game season, when you look on the stats, this would be their best year in franchise history, including in Hartford. But Niederreiter hasn't had that great of a year. Well, Rask has had a phenomenal year, scoring the final goal, uh, game-winning goal in the regular season. In fact, Minnesota's last three wins have come in overtime. Uh, Victor Rask had the last one in the regular season. Eric Sinek, who I think is one of the best years, uh, even though Kaprizov has overshadowed it, scored the overtime winner in the playoffs in Vegas. But anyway, for the Wilds' first win in franchise history against the Golden Knights in the playoffs. But anyway, uh, this is not a guy Minnesota would want leaving, but I think Rask does go. He plays as big as the role he's had in Minnesota, which is much bigger than in Rally. He's going to play an even larger role in Seattle on the physical presence and scoring touch. Montreal, from Montreal and Jake Allen over to Seattle. From Montreal, I think the starting goaltender, they're going to take their starting goaltender. No, not Carey Price, but the starter. You're not going to have Fleury, a Hall of Famer, available, but you will have some good goaltenders available. And I think for Montreal... Jake Allen will go, who will be the starting goaltender, as we'll get into that later, for the Seattle Kraken. Jake Allen, he was on, he didn't start, but he was on the cup team with the St. Louis Blues. He has the experience there. He played a lot of years as a good goaltender in St. Louis and in Montreal, and will help backstop the Seattle Kraken. From Nashville, they get a guy that is inconsistent, but when he is consistent, is a pure goal scorer and maybe can revitalize his career in Seattle. And that's Kaye Yarncrook. The Baltic forward. He can play center, but likes to play winger from the Nashville Predators. They get goal scoring. That's what you're getting from Yarncrook. Seattle is going to get goal scoring there. New Jersey, they take another Baltic player, Swede, Andres Janssen, former Maple Leaf, former Devil from New Jersey. He's a hard-hitting forward that can get pucks to the net. He played a more physical and big presence in New Jersey, as New Jersey is not Toronto, but going to help Seattle. We'll see what they can do with Janssen. I don't know if Seattle can make the playoffs this year. I don't think they can, but I think they will. Definitely put up a fight. They're not going to be last, that's for sure. From the Islanders, I think one of the best picks that Ron Francis will make, Scott Mayfield, is a guy that could do some absolute damage. As a skilled offensive defenseman, he's physical but doesn't need to be. He's got a great shot and agility is off the hook with Scott Mayfield. From the Rangers, I think they take an off-injured center that is young and does have the potential to be a game-breaker. Brett Howden coming off injury. This is going to be a real prove-it year, and I think nowhere to start but a new team where the slate is completely clean. Brett Howden goes to the Kraken. From Ottawa, 
They take a guy that can play a lot of center minutes. Didn't play much in San Jose. Has actually, believe it or not, after being traded from a contender in the Eric Carlson deal, not played a huge amount in Ottawa. He, he's had time, but he still hasn't really you know, just jumped off the board. And Chris Tierney, this is another real showcase here for a chance if he goes to Seattle. But Tierney, I would say, is the guy. From Philadelphia, you guys had a bad last few years after jumping into the spotlight his first two years. Shane Gostis Bear, a head-up defenseman, a great offensive defenseman, I think is going to play another big role in Seattle, especially on their power play, so the Kraken take Gostas Bear. From Pittsburgh, another young defenseman, although this is more of a defensive defenseman, and unlike Gostas Bear, who's small and quick, he is quick, but he's a, a, a bigger defenseman, can dump the puck, can shoot through, and is going to be relied more to hit and forecheck and stick check. And that's John Marino from the Pittsburgh Penguins. So John Marino will go to Seattle to help them in the back end. Uh, another offensive-minded defenseman, young Mario Ferraro from the San Jose Sharks, will work on pinching in plays and shooting from the point. Also, he's got a great offensive-type mobility, and Ferraro would be good for Seattle. From St. Louis, who I think is going to play first-line minutes consistently for most of his, for the first time really in his career, or I think is just one of the better players that we've seen that has just grown, especially on the Blues, but I just don't think St. Louis will protect them. They don't know what they have, but I think they're going to know after they lose them. Robert Thomas. Robert Thomas, he started everything on that Game 7 overtime win against the Dallas Stars in the year they won the Cup. Again, a young Stanley Cup champion, that's always good. He's super skilled. He's great defensively. He's a forward that could play center but doesn't need to. Robert Thomas will put in goal scoring. An older version of Robert Thomas will be drafted from the expansion drafted from the Tampa Bay Lightning, the current champs, Andre Palat, who did everything Robert Thomas has done. He's better. He can be better. He is better, at least now. Physical player, can get pucks through in the crease. Also has a nice seeing eye shot, Andre Palat from the uh, from the Tampa Bay Lane. Both those players are Stanley Cup champions, which really helps. Uh, right now, obviously, still playing in Toronto, but Wayne Simmons from the Maple Leafs is a guy that he's played his offensive type play. Like he can he, he can jolt ahead, he can get breakaways, he can play like anybody, like an offensive type dynamite player. But he's older and he doesn't need to. He establishes physical presence, playoff type player in Wayne Simmons. He can fight fist to cuff just like that. He can get into scrums hit. He can give you intensity and he can tell you what it's like to win. An experienced player that doesn't need to score, but if you need him to score and like playoff type atmosphere, he raises his game for the playoffs. That's the type of player you're getting from Wayne Simmons. Guy used to play in Buffalo and New Jersey. Uh, L.A., best known for his years in Philadelphia and also now playing in Toronto. Vancouver, I uh, take uh, an experienced, lanky defenseman in Travis Hamannick, former Islander, former Flame, Canuck, Travis Hamannick. And also the reason for the Canucks hat is also because, well, it's one of the only hats I have here, but also that Seattle and Vancouver is going to have that rivalry. I'm really excited for that rivalry. I think it's going to be fantastic for the game. For hockey, I do think Vancouver is going to have the early edge on that rivalry. I know they have a bad year this year, but I will say that that is going to be one of the more fun rivalries in the year. But again, Hamannick, uh, former Canuck, uh, he was waiver wire, but I think he could stay here being a defenseman that could put in. Yes, he can shoot from the point. He can be offensive, but he's going to be relied more to do defensive work for Seattle. From Washington... Former Ranger, Penguin, Duck, and now Capital. They take a guy that's experienced, playoff player, can forecheck, can do all those things, plays a speedster. They can score goals if you need him to on uh, the third, fourth line. Carl Haglin. Carl Haglin can come in on the, the second power play. He hasn't played a lot of power play time because the Capitals are loaded offensively. 
But if you need him to be, he, he can. He's a fantastic winger. He brings all the skills and the speed. And for Winnipeg, you get a guy that I think is going to play a much bigger role than he has with the Jets. He played a big role with the Jets. He played a gigantic role in Seattle in a physical center that can hit, but also is going to score goals. Cop and Lowry, I think, would be the two guys as centers since Winnipeg is loaded with wingers and their talent, their, their most talented position is their winger. Winger, I think Lowry would be good for them or Cop. I don't think Cop would be available. I really think Cop is one of those players that Winnipeg just is going to protect. Like you're protecting Shifley, you're protecting Wheeler and Connor. Well, I think you're gonna have to protect Cop. And Lowry is not a guy you want to leave, but I think a guy that will. So Winnipeg. Again, quickly, I will read them through again. Ranheim, Larson, from Arizona, Pitlick, from Boston, Vladar, from Buffalo. Oh, I forgot Buffaloes. Okay, let me get back to Buffalo. I'm sorry, I completely skipped over Buffalo. For Buffalo, the number one defenseman that I think he'll be available. Sabres fans won't like this, but I think he will be available because of everything. Rasmus Ristolainen. Huge defenseman. So much upside. He's got a fantastic shot. A definite offensive zone defenseman. He doesn't strike to me as a quarterback on the power play, but he's going to score power play goals. He's going to be out there if he, if he needs to be. I don't know how much he'll, he'll be there, but he's great 5-on-5. Five five. He's, uh, he, he's good. He's not great as a defensive-minded defenseman, but he's physical. He can hit. Uh, think about a mix... Think about a mix in the middle between Jonathan Erickson and Nicholas Cronwall. You just don't know what you're getting with him. But he is good, and he's got a powerful shot. Rasmus Ristolainen from Buffalo, so I forgot about that. But anyway, Larson from Anaheim, Pitlick from Arizona, Vladar from Boston, Ristolainen from Buffalo, Nordstrom from Calgary, Paquette from Carolina, Subban from Chicago, Taves from Colorado, Ros Roslovic from Columbus, Alexiak from Dallas, Panic from Detroit, Neil from Edmonton, Gusev from Florida, Wah from L.A. and that, uh, Los Angeles. That's James Neal also from Edmonton, if you're wondering, Neal there. Rask from Minnesota, Jake Allen, Allen from Montreal, Yarkroak from Nashville, Ansh Johnson from New Jersey, Mayfield from the Islanders, Howden from the Rangers, Tierney from Ottawa, Gustav Bear from Philadelphia, Marino from Pittsburgh, Ferraro from San Jose, Thomas from St. Louis, Palat from Tampa Bay, Toronto from, well, Wayne Simmons from Toronto, Travis Hamannick from the Vancouver Canucks, Carl Hagelin from Washington, and Adam Lowry from the Jets. Okay. Now to some of the lineups, guys. Now to the lineups. The first line, that will be in action. And left wing, Thomas, Robert Thomas for the first line. At center, Adam Lowry. On the right wing, Andre Pilat. For the second line, left wing, Cedric Paquette. At the center, Chris Tierney. On the right wing, Victor Rask. In the third line, Carl Hagelin. Left wing, Kai Yarkrook at center. Right wing, Richard Panic. On the fourth line, Wayne Simmons. At the center, Brett Howden. And the right wing, Jack Ross. So some of those other players won't go. The first D1 pairing, Rasmus Ristolainen and Scott Mayfield. We go big, small. Same thing here on the D2 pairing. Jamie Alexiak and, and Shane Gostas bear. And on the D3 pairing, Devon Taves and John Marino. The first power play unit is going to have Robert Thomas, Victor Rask, Adam Lowry, Kaya Yarncroke, and Shane Gostas bear going to do the power play work as a quarterback. Carl Haglin on the second power play, Andre Pallad as well, Cedric Pocket, Brett Howden, and Devon Taves. The first penalty kill unit is going to be Alexiak, Howden, Brett Howden, uh, Panic, and Wayne Simmons. And Vladar will probably be in and out the AHL system, but your number one guy is Jake Allen, and your backup, who also played in Vegas for some time, is Malcolm Subban for the laner trade. All right, I might see you tonight. I'm not sure. It's going to depend because i got a big test tonight, but... I will definitely see you tomorrow. I don't know if we'll see you tonight. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, I'm thinking about it, but uh, not sure. Um, but again, see you soon. Happy hockey, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it.